In today's video, I'll show you how to use frame pack to create a first and last frame interpolation. Last week, we got an exciting news to create long videos that is extremely high quality using the frame pack architecture with Hun Yuan video model, being able to run 13 billion parameter models relatively quickly on a consumer grade GPU as low as 6 GB VRAM was absolutely incredible. And in this video, I'll share a workflow that is possible right now that you can use to create a first and last frame interpolation using FramePack. This workflow will use the custom node called ComfyUI RH Frame Pack, which allows you to use the Running Hub Frame Pack node to create a first and last interpolation, as shown in this video example right here. In order to download this custom node, go to your ComfyUI Custom Node Manager and search up Running Hub, and the ComfyUI RH Frame Pack is the one that you need to download. After you install the custom node, just restart ComfyUI. If you have already installed FramePack before and tried to run it on ComfyUI, you probably can just skip this step. But if this is your first time running FramePack, you need to install the proper models in the right directories. The easiest way to do this is by using this Python script. You can go to the ComfyUI slash models folder and right click there and create a new text file called downloadmodels.py. You want to open up this text file with the editor that you like. For me, I'm using the Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to copy this one-click download with Python script and paste it in the download models file. Open this up in Terminal or Visual Studio Code and type in python downloadmodels.py. And this process will take a bit of time because it will take about 30 to 40 gigabytes of files to download. If you already have the models folder from the one-click frame pack installer, you might be able to just copy and paste the models, but I haven't tried this yet. After the download completes, just drop the workflow into the Comfy UI. The first and last frame workflow is pretty simple. You just need to put the first frame image and the last frame image. Personally, for me, I see great results in terms of animations when the first and last images are not totally different. For example, you can see big differences between these two images and the only animation that we see in the final output is the transitions. But I also found these two images of a female model doing a different pose, but the two pictures are very similar. These are just the screenshots of the images that I got online, so the image resolution is not very good. But you can see that after I generated this video with FramePack, it creates a pretty smooth transitions between these two poses. I'm going to share a workflow later in the video to generate these two similar images side by side. So you can use these for the frame pack interpolation. I've also tested these images of two screenshots of a same actor making a different pose and the animation looks to be pretty smooth as well. Let's now look at the workflow that you can use to generate these two images side by side so that you can use it for the first frame and the last frame for the interpolation. For this, we're going to use ControlNet. In the beginning of the workflow, we're setting the dimension of the final image. For the dimension, we have 1080 by 960, and we're setting this to the height and width variable. Moving on to the right, we have the generate side by side ControlNet group. We're getting the width and the height from the variables that we set. We're going to divide the width by 2 and subtract 5. 5 in this case is actually the width of the white line that you see in the preview image right here. We're going to create a final image so that we have a white line dividing the black rectangles in the middle. And the width of the entire white line is 10 in this case. For the control net model, we're using the Flux 1 Dev Control Net Union Pro 2.0 by Shaker Lab that was released recently. And we're using the Apply Control Net to the Flux model. The Flux workflow is essentially the same as any other Flux workflow that you see online. We're using the Flux 1 Dev FP8 model, which is a quantized version. And since we're using FP8 version, I also use the FP8 version of the clip model as well. This ensures that everything is optimized and we're not doing any unnecessary conversions. At the top, there's also the Florence model generation prompt section where you can load any image that you want and it's going to describe it using the Florence 2 base prompt generation version 2.0 model. It's going to concatenate this base prompt with the detailed caption of the image. And you can use this final prompt to generate a side-by-side -side image with the same style as your loaded image. For example, I use this picture to create a female character with the bodysuit pointing the gun at the viewer. In the end, these two side-by-side -side images are then separated so that you can download individual images for the frame pack interpolation. 
you might need to do a little bit of a trial and error to get good images. And using these two images, this is the result for the frame pack interpolation. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful so that you can use frame pack for your first frame to last frame interpolation. In my opinion, the 1.2.0 first frame to last frame workflow is a little bit more versatile and it creates a lot more dynamic movements. But I do find the frame pack animations to be a little bit more smooth if you do find two of the right images. And using these two workflows, you can create your own frame pack interpolation video. As always, I'm going to be back with more useful AI models and workflows, so feel free to subscribe for more AI contents. Thanks a lot for watching.